ADI DNS, this time on Practical Exploitation. Welcome to Practical Exploitation, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today, we're going to be talking about ADI DNS, dump. And so that what that means is Active Directory Integrated DNS Dumping Tool. And the cool thing about this is that, well, uh, a self plug here is that I wrote about this in 2013 using a, a PowerShell script we're going to talk about in a second. But Dirk Jan Molema, and I apologize for messing up your name because you're such an awesome uh, part of this community. If you haven't seen Dirk Jan's um, amazing projects, look at all of them. Um, Road Tools, uh, I'm blanking on a lot of them. Uh, his awesome updates to NTLM Relay X. Um, all of the Kerberos stuff that he's done, it's its amazing. Anyways, getting to the point, ADI DNS, Active Directory Integrated DNS. Since about, two, oh man, 2003, 2008, something, one of those versions of, of, of Microsoft's Windows Server Edition, um, Active Directory or DNS became a basically a required piece of it. I think it was even older than that. But um, integrated DNS basically means that um, all of the DNS records are in Active Directory. And now a lot of tools uh, for a long time didn't look at this um, and didn't, didn't even know that it existed or whatever. Like attackers, even today, don't seem to use this as part of their um, TTPs. Because, and I don't know why. Um, it's literally the easiest way to get so much information about the hosts and users, or hosts and um, IP addresses and IP ranges that are out there um, in Active Directory. It's just a treasure trove of information. You can get, and depending on how they name things, you can even get information about what kind of OS it is. Um, you can get, and you can get that from other parts of Active Directory, but you can get Unix systems, you can get, like if they add vCenter or whatever to their Active Directory, um, you can get that uh, if they integrate it. There's so much information in Active Directory's DNS records. And the crazy thing is that as a, as a standard user, using the DNS command.exe that's out there um, on server edition, um, you can't query any of this. It says access denied, but if you just ask DNS or ask Active Directory for it or LDAP for it, you can get all of this information. So um, with the PowerShell script, and let's actually dive into what this is on the screen so I can show you more about this. All right, so here's Dirk Jan's post about um, getting the zone or, or um, getting in the zone, dumping Active Directory DNS using ADI DNS dump. And that's super hard to say, but whatever, we're going to get through this. Um, and so he talks about how all of these records are in DNS. Um, Kevin, Kevin Robinson did a um, cool post about it. Uh, and this guy named Mubix posted back in 2013. And this is my post on it. So I'm, I just wanted to go through this really quick. Um, with NS lookup, you can do a zone transfer. This is using the DNS integrated zone transfer um, technique. You have to have zone transfers allowed um, for this to work. Same with dig. Um, and here's that DNS command that you can use on Windows. However, you can't do this as a um, standard user. So here in PowerShell, you can actually see how you can get these records as a standard user. AD find actually gives you another way of doing it. If you have not used AD find in the past, um, Joe tools, um, AD find is an amazing, amazing tool. It does so much. Um, it should be in everybody's toolkit um, just because it already did things and it was built like in 2004. <laughs> and so here, if you look, here's all the records for each one of the DNS records I had at the time. And here's the PowerShell script at this GitHub for this user um, that allowed you to do a DNS dump. And the, the 
why this is so difficult, why why you have why you have to have a PowerShell script instead of just querying Active Directory, is because all of the DNS records are in their byte form, and so when it when Active Directory shows it to you, it has to convert it. So in the PowerShell script, you have to convert it as well. Um, and so in this, and I can actually go into these these conversions. You can see that in let's go down to one of the record types and here's the SOA and it's actually getting this specific bytes to then convert into what the primary server number name is the serial number the TTL and such and it converts all of this so I'm doing that uh, before we get into the hidden records doing that is it's relatively simple you just have to go through the um, you know the, the pieces of the DNS records in Active Directory, and you know what? I should have pulled up the MSN article for it, or um, and the uh, MSDN article for it, but I didn't. Um, I'll put those in the show notes later. Um, I have these show notes over here for the source, as well as the blog post uh, for what I just showed, and the two links that he has in there. I haven't put Kevin Robinson's in there, but I will later. So. The thing about this is that um, once you have the code to convert all the records, it's relatively simple to then query Active Directory for it. What Dirk Jan actually found out was that some records, um, for some reason, are not available to users. Now, this is no big deal because once you know that record exists, which you can look at um, by default for any user, you can then query it um, and find out what happened to it or why it's not showing. Now, I'm going to show you an example of this in a second of how to do this. So here's his example, and what I'm going to do is do ADI pip3 install ADI DNS comp. And that's his tool, and it should already be installed. I already did it. It's relatively simple. The uh, requirements are very lax. Um, but now that I have it installed, I can just run it from the command prompt and I'm going to do a dash H to show you what is needed for here. So um, username has to be in the domain username format. Okay, easy enough. Password, great. Forest. Now, um, this is interesting because you can actually pull down full forest worth of domains. So if there's, um, if there's child uh, uh, parent DNS records, you'll get all of them. Um, legacy, this is where you ha you're having to deal with a much older domain um, where they have it in the system partition instead of the regular, uh, or instead of the high level uh, partition for the domain. Um, this was actually a problem back in um, in the original post. Uh, if I scroll up really quick to show you what's going on here, you can see that I actually committed to this back in 2014 to make this change so that it would actually allow you to do both um, or specify the domain. Nope, I didn't do that. Um, anyway, somewhere in here, you can see that it's on both um, the forest domain as well. Ah, well, I should have had that prepared and I didn't. Anyways, so then you can specify a zone if you want to, if you want to look at anything other than the current domain. Print zones will only query the um, zones um, so that you can get a list of those, which is good to do on your first run. Verbose, obviously, always um, good, as well as debug, just to get all of the output. Um, I like, I love to get verbose or debug output just so that I can have it. I can then parse things out if I need to. Um, DNS TCP, why this is important, if you are going over a proxy chain setup, so if you have an interpreter session and you have proxy chains on top of this, um, proxy chains does not proxy UDP. So you're going to have to do the the DNS TCP option to get uh, do, do that here because it will query your, uh, your default resolver um, to do that. And I actually have another post where I configure the default resolver for proxy chains. Um, which is hard coded to 4.2.2.3 or something like that. Um, the next one is Tombstone. If you don't know what Tombstone is, it, it tells you right here it's deleted records. 
this can actually be pretty um, awesome. The only thing I would caution you on doing is if you're going to do include tombstone, do not do resolve. So uh, as I said before, resolving hidden records is where you um, take all of the record names and then actually use your, your resolver to find them. Um, that way you can read, technically not read, but you know, get a copy of um, all of the records that um, you don't have permission to read as that user. If you do include Tombstone, you're going to be resolving things that are no longer existing, and your result your results are going to take it forever for no good reason. So I would do one or the other. SSL. This is just saying SSL for the LDAP server. Um, you know, allow pass through authentication to all referral hosts. I don't honestly know what that one does. Um, I couldn't even fathom a guess. Pass through authentication to all referral hosts. I assume that it means that it hits all of the different LDAP servers. I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. So default uh, DC filter says that you don't want specific um, DNS types. And then SSL protocol for whatever. All right, let's just do it. So we're going to say our username is sitting duck uber, uh, not an admin, not an admin. And then our password, we're not going to specify that. We'll just leave it on the command line. I like verbose. Again, I like debug information just because I like to have more info than not. And then finally, our host name. Now, I can specify 192.168.80.10 because that's our DC, uh, our DNS server. So I'm going to do the password, and you can see all of the records that came out of it. So this is the output. You can see all this. All right. The nice thing is it writes to a file by default. Now this can be kind of annoying if you don't remember and you write it to the directory that you just happen to be in because ADI DNS is a pip install and it's in your bin path. You can run it from any directory, but that records.csv will automatically put in whatever your present working directory is. So make sure you make a directory, put it there or be in the directory you need it in. So if I cat those records, that's you can see all of these different record types. Now, here's the bad news. If you look, there isn't anything, there's nothing really there except for A records and SRV records. No C name records. And C name records do get created quite a bit. Um, these question marks are where the resolution failed or you couldn't look it up. Um, so the R option is where you could get there. Now I'm going to run this again with the R option and wait and watch that. Oh, you know what? Let's run it again without the R rep. And I'm going to run a TCB dump just to show you that no actual resolution is going there. And that, that actually. So it dumped all the records again. No resolution happening. I'm going to run it one more time with the R, and you can see, if I type correctly, that as soon as it starts finding stuff, it's going to then do the lookups for the research domain that no longer exists on Sitting Duck. And you can see that it's stalled out, waiting for those records to resolve, and it's going to fail. Now, I don't know why there's some bug in this, and it, if there's a timeout on the resolution or whatever, but it doesn't seem to like it when it can't actually resolve one of the subdomains. But, no, oh, it actually didn't error out that time. That's a new one. I thought it aired out last time. Anyways, so that's ADI DNS. Um, and now I really want to talk, since this is, yeah, there's the error. And that's it. ADI DNS, really simply, um, it takes all the DNS records and gives you in, in the records.csv. Now the CNAME record that I had in there for www, it didn't show up for some reason. 
And when I looked in the um, listing, even in debug, it didn't show it for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't. Oh, there's the C name. Type 5 C name. Yep, record found for dub dub dub. I don't know why it doesn't do, like, it doesn't output it in the records list. So you have to do verbose to see it. No idea why. I think that's a bug. I'll, I'll probably submit that as a bug on his GitHub and just say, hey, it'd be nice to have this information as well. Um, anywho, it's super awesome to have this information. One, because you can get it as a standard user. You don't have to do any scanning. You don't have to do any any other crazy like kung fu to get this information. It's all just sitting there in Active Directory. Um, you get to learn about IPs, about um, hosts, and I can't tell you how many times I have done resolutions on engagements when I forgot the IP or didn't document the IP for the box that I've been, you know, looking at for the last 20 minutes. Like, and then I have to come back and look through my notes or look through this, you know, scroll through the logs of all of the things that I've done in the last hour and a half to find that IP address or just resolve it again, creating unnecessary network traffic and more IOCs as an attacker where I could just have this records.csv and, and look, look through it. Like I'm just being stupid if I'm not doing it this way in the future, right? Because if I have all this information directly accessible to me, why not just use it, right? So uh, that's it. Yeah, subdomains, hosts. I'm sorry. I'm just remembering all the things that I wanted to tell you guys about because I'm really excited about um, Active Directory DNS. Like I've been trying to harp on this since 2013. So get it through your heads um, that this is a really cool technique. And I actually submitted it to, oh my gosh, I submitted it to Empire uh, way back when. And it went into the dev branch, but never made it out of the dev branch. And I don't think it's in the new Empire either, because I've checked. Um, so, like, I don't know what I have to do to get this noticed, but now that Dirk Jan's on it too, and Kevin Robinson on it, hopefully people start using this technique and um, being able to um, do better on pen tests or, or defend better when they see a bunch of records being queried in Active Directory. I don't think this is even in ATA yet. So hopefully this gets us into the defensive side too. All right, that's it. Um, I really appreciate you tuning into this episode of Practical Exploitation. If you want to support me, check out patreon.com forward slash Mubix. Um, we are on a monthly time frame. I'm sorry that we haven't uh, been doing as many episodes as I wanted to do, but getting uh, let go due to a layoffs due to COVID kind of hurts that. So I apologize for this being such a late episode, but thank you so much for tuning back in. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing these episodes. Really appreciate it. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm Ubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.